All right, so what's going on, Yelani? We got another Bernoulli equation problem. Um, I need two more of these, so this one and one more. Uh, I forgot to print these out the other day. So um, the problem reads, water flows steadily through the variable area pipe shown uh, with negligible viscous effects. So we got to determine the manometer reading, the H, if the flow rate is 0 0.5 and the density of the manometer Fluid is 600. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let me show you real quick how we'll uh, approach this problem. So we're gonna do Bernoulli's right. Um, we're gonna do it from this point to this point. Now, the reason I chose these two points, right, cause you really could, I mean, technically you could choose it here, 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 anywhere, right? But um, the thing is it's not, easy getting pressure um, values and heights at those locations, right? So technically, yes, we could do it from here to some point here, right? But then we gotta find heights from this point to this point and it kinda makes no sense. So in these problems, just know that you usually gotta do it here when you could find something in terms of pressure. Um, they really don't give us anything to help us except this manometer here. And obviously this point, that goes up to this point right here. And again, we use these points because we have a cross-sectional area. They give us flow rate. We got this cross-sectional area. That means we could get velocity at both points. The height, we can't get height numbers, but we know if we draw our datum here, these two heights are the same, so the heights cancel out. So we'll just, in the Bernoulli, you have pressure, velocity, and height. These cancel out, we could find velocity and then pressures, we don't, but we could get pressure, um, a differential, uh, a difference in pressure, so delta P. And that's gonna give us some number, right? Then we use manometers to find another delta in pressure in terms of the manometers, right? And set these two equal together and you could find height. So you'll see what I mean, but let's go ahead and get started, so. First step, right, always knowns. So we're dealing with water and some fluid, right? So we got density of water is equal to a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. Um, they give us the density of the fluid, right? That's 600 right here. Uh, Kilograms per meter cubed. What else? What else? They give us the areas. So area of point one, area of point two. A1 is equal to 0 0.05 meters squared, right? Area of two is equal to 0 0.07 meters squared. What else, what else? Um, oh, on the flow rate, right? Obviously, right here. So let's go ahead and put that here. No, go ahead and do it here. Q1 is equal to Q2, right? Flow rate's the same everywhere. So that is equal to 0 0.5 meters cubed per second. And we're also dealing with uh, manometers. So let's go ahead and get the gammas for those. Gamma water. That's 98, 10 newtons per meter cubed. Gamma the fluid, multiply this number times 9.81, right gravity. That will give you 5886 newtons per meter cubed. Okay, cool. So again, we gotta do Bernoulli first. Um, in order to do that, we need these three variables, pressure, velocity, and height. Um, so let's go ahead and do, let's find the velocities. So velocity is what well, we know, Q1 is equal to A1, V1, right? And Q2 is equal to A2, V2. We have Q, that's 0 0.5 for both of them, A1 and A2, so we can find V1 and V2. So if you do that, V1 is equal to 10 meters per second 
V2 is equal to 7.14 meters per second. And that's just uh, flow rate divided by area. <clears throat> and then, cool. So we got velocities, we got heights. The heights are the same, so they cancel out. And then pressure. So let's go ahead and start that Bernoulli. Bernoulli. So it's P1, right, plus one half rho, uh, what is this, V1 squared, plus rho GH1 is equal to P2, plus one half rho V2 squared, plus rho GH of 2. Okay, cool. So we agreed, right, that they're at the same height so the heights cancel out this whole term cancels out right here uh we got velocities and we don't know the pressures so let's go ahead and do p1 right plus one half rho v1 squared is equal to p2 plus one half rho v2 squared and that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and keep this in mind. Let's just uh, bubble it up. We'll come back to this. All right, so let's go ahead and do the manometers now. So from manometers, right, so I'm not sure if you remember, from, but, but from manometers, we start at this point go all around, work down to our final point, set it equal to the final point. So we start at P1, we're going up, so that's negative. Um, we're dealing with water from here to here. Let's go ahead and label this A, some distance A, right? Okay, and then um, we'll probably, um, yeah, that's fine, just A. So it's P1. P1, we're going up to this point, so it's minus gamma of water, right? This blue liquid is water. And then times your height, which is uh, height A. Okay, now from this point to this point is the distance H, what we're looking for. So we're going up again, right? From this point to this point, you go up. So it is density, let's put gamma the fluid times h now from this point to this point that is a plus h so right a plus h that's your height right there um right it's just this height plus this height so now we're going from this point to this point we're going down so it's positive gamma of water h plus h a Height A, that's all it means. Um, finally, we arrive at P2. All right, so we kind of just uh, work our way through, right? P1 minus gamma of water. Uh, well, you know what? Let's simplify first. Gamma of water, HA, minus gamma of fluid times H, plus gamma of water times H plus gamma of water times HA equals P2. Okay, um, here we see this term cancels out with this one, so that's cool. Uh, let's do, let's move P1 to this side. Um, and the reason I move P1 to this side and not P2 to this side, well, the thing is I know the pressure here is higher just by thinking logically. So. If you see this, there's a pressure here, right? And it's pushing up. Same here, it's pushing up. But if you notice, this one's winning. Do you see that? You see the line all the way up here? This one's only up to here. That's because this one's pushing up with a greater force than this one. So I know pressure two is higher than P1. If the line was here for point one and the line was here for point two, pretty much just the opposite, I'd know P1 is higher because it's pushing on that fluid. Uh, more than water. If they were at the same height from here to here, then I know the pressures are pretty much the same. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But 
try to think about it logically. Um, that's all that's going on. So that's the reason I'm moving P1 to this side. Even if it, even if you're not right, don't even worry about that. At the end, the negatives will sort themselves out. If you get a negative number, that just means you assumed the wrong. I mean, it's nothing crazy. It won't mess you up. So we have gamma of water. I'm going to put this one first. Times H minus gamma of fluid times H is equal to P2 minus P1. Uh, we don't know P2 or P1, but we do know uh, gamma water, gamma fluid. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, well, actually, we could factor out the H. Right? Gamma water is 9810 minus 5886 is equal to delta P. Okay. So that just means difference in pressure. Um... That means this is, um, you know, I'll just leave it like that for now. It doesn't matter. I'm too lazy to do the calculation and, but we gotta do it, right? So now we do the same thing. So this delta P, right? P2 minus P1. We isolate P2 minus P1 on this equation too. So now step five, that is P2 minus p1 right i move p1 over here so that means this stays positive right is equal to one half delta uh, density v1 squared is oh no minus one half density v2 squared in other words this is just delta p so now we could set a uh, this this part of the equation equal to this. Does that make sense? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, that means H times, where's my calculator? Hold on, be right back. All right, so I didn't do this calculation for some reason. This is 3924, cool. 9810 minus 5886 is 3924 is equal to density is 1,000. So when you divide it by 2, that's 500 times 10 squared, right? Plug-in velocity minus, again, 500. Now we're going to multiply this by 7.14 squared. Yeah, squared, same thing uh cool so we get a number on one side that's cool we're gonna have three nine two four h is equal to parentheses around that h is equal to 10 squared that's 100 that's 5000 is it 5000 two zeros you know what 10 times 10 times 500 yeah, when in doubt, just calculator. Minus 7.14 squared times 500. That is 25,490. Rounding it up. 25, yeah, 490. Cool. So 50,000 minus 25,490. That is 24,510. All right, this is three, nine, two, four, same thing, H. That means H is equal to, divided by three, nine, two, four, 6.246, 6.246 meters. Cool, so that's the answer to this one. So this one was um, a little bit trickier, right? Um, I'm not sure if you, but this is something you gotta know, so. Obviously, they didn't give us anything for pressure except this manometer. Sometimes th this side will be straight open to the atmosphere, as you see in, um, if you check the other video, you'll see a problem where it's open to the atmosphere. Same here. Sometimes it'll just give you a straight up pressure gauge reading. That makes things way easier, right? They just give you 50 kilopascals or whatever. I think I also did an example on that one. 
and and this one uses a manometer so i think that's the only three cases you'll ever come across with a i guess a horizontal tube like this or vertical um i don't think there's anything else other than that um we use bernoulli we set the pressure difference here equal to the pressure difference here right p2 minus p1 is equal to p2 minus p1 here and that's pretty much it um just this one yeah it could be a matron problem so just keep an eye out